Untuk agenda seterusnya iaitu overview program pembangunan insaniah pelajar PPIP pelajar doktor uh, pelajar program doktor perubatan ISM seterusnya uh, nurturing compassionate professional dipersilakan doktor Noor Azwani Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Terlebih dahulu terima kasih kerana menjemput saya And Pelik juga nak terus cakap pasal PPIP Tanpa you all betul-betul faham tentang struktur eh, Klaim MD and Anyway and Maybe because saya memang tak pernah keluar dari USM I'm the product of 8th uh, batch and MD Pek Bahim my, my teacher before So it's good to see all the friends, juniors, and even the ex-student are here. And okay, and and since I'm the product of USM, I'm very familiar with integrated system. I'm the product of the old system three phases. Now we come for two phases. Uh, I involved uh, with the, our major revamp from three phases to two phases, which actually took us nearly two years. And to start to change from three phases to two phases, okay. And, and now we are doing our curriculum review, and there's a few modification suggested because we just have our first graduate of the new system, and uh, this convo uh, this year, okay. So and to to make you understand on the PPIP, then I think uh, I have to relook a little bit on our structure, okay. And sorry, I don't like to uh, talk at the podium because or else people didn't see me. <laughs> okay, okay. And so as you mentioned that uh, PPIP stands for Program Pembangunan Insaniah Pelajar, and uh, or uh, officially in our MQA document, it is Student Personal Professional Development Program. Okay, and so I'll. Talk a little bit on the. Tak jadi. Nampak tak jadi? Kau tak on lagi. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I'll talk a little bit on the concept of it, activities and the challenges that we are having, and um, because it's not easy to train somebody who already and um, bring up. And their own family or with a hostile environment and for us to nurture them to become compassionate. Okay? So that's a challenge in that. So the history wise is that if you look into the name program Pembangunan Insaniah, the terminology Pembangunan Insaniah comes into play during Tan Sri, uh, Tan Sri, bukan Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim when he became the Menteri dan pendidikan. So dia yang memulakan uh, terminologi insania. Okey. Dan dan lepas tu keluar all the kemahiran insania soft skill module and so on. Okey. And uh, in later in 2007 they put this human capital development to look into all this human capital first class mentality. Some people say that why put first class mentality do we have 
second class mentality or low class mentality. But, but at the end of the day, it goes that we look into the knowledge attribute, personal attribute, and interpersonal attribute. <clears throat> so if you look into personal attributes and interpersonal attributes, it goes to the professionalism, it goes to teamwork, and so on. So, and if you go to um, our habit, it is all, actually, even though the time goes on, the concept is the same. It goes to capacity, human capacity building, becomes insania, then becomes mentality, and uh, first class mentality, now becomes habit. And uh, I think last, uh, our last talk with Prof. Asma said, I don't know whether this will be coming to continue with a new VC or not, then we didn't know. Okay? This is up to our top admin. But basically, it goes all this way, thinker in terms of critical thinking, articulate, balance, okay? Because uh, we are talking about uh, mental health now, okay? There's a lot of issues in mental health. I think uh, I came for the uh, Guys Panduan Pengurusan Mental Health uh, Campus Indo. There's a lot of problem in uh, Campus Indo. Not much in our health campus, maybe because we are doctors. So we, we identify a mental health problem faster than the Indo people. So it's still in progress. I don't know what happened with the new VC, then maybe become halted for a while. Okay, so what happened actually? Previously, we have, this is old system, the three phases. In three phases system, we have bioethics and communication block. Three phases, we have block. We doesn't have cost. We doesn't have cost code. It's by block. So we have bioethics and communication block. And later on, we realized, and Student Development Unit was actually headed or handled by medical education. At this time, bioethic communication was headed by Prof. Azida, uh, our family medicine specialist. And Student Development Unit uh, was headed by Dr. Fuan. Okay? And later on, we realized that we need uh, a structured program, uh, and Prof. Azida uh, was asked to head the PPIP. I started to head, uh, take PPIP when she took sabbatical leave in 2008, and until now. Uh, the problem is they can never ask me, do you want to continue? I always just get the letter of appointment, <laughs> okay? Okay, so many people also look into professionalism and uh, I always be asked um, by people that, oh, you didn't put on communication, oh, you didn't put on teamwork. It's actually professionalism is encompassing all the, those things. So when you talk about professionalism, goes talk on also ethics, goes on the respectful, goes on the team player and leadership and so on. So it is all in professionalism. That's why now people, uh, the terminology now is not medical ethics, terminology now is medical professional, professionalism, medical professionalism, okay? That is just a rebranding, but actually it goes the whole thing, okay? Because when you talk about ethics, it goes to the professionalism, yeah? When I started taking PPIP, I asked Prof Zabidi, Prof Zabidi is, uh, for me is my mentor, I asked Prof Zabidi, why PPIP? which have the name, the term professionalism, but I have to handle ethics. So, and I took a few, quite a months to really understand the whole situation, uh, and to learn how to teach ethics. Yeah, because when you graduated as MD, USM, you also forget whatever happened in the bioethics block before, right? Okay, but it's because what? Because you didn't remember the concept. I didn't remember the four principles of eth uh, medical ethics, but it is nurtured in you. It becomes part of your practice, and that is what we are going to do, okay? To make them practice as if it is their autopilot. Huh? So that is nurture, okay? So it's no point. I always tell my students, I don't mind you didn't remember the four principles of medical ethics as long as it's embedded in you, it's already in your mind. And that basically goes for the mercy later. Okay, so in, in MD, we have all the medical degree curriculum. So mind you, why we, why we still have 
this specific course of medical ethics. Basically, when I went to Osaka University, I asked them, how do you teach ethics? Do you have a specific course? And they said, why we need a specific course? It should be in everywhere. Okay, so that is Japanese thinker. Okay, but for us in our MQA, want us to be seen, to have one specific course on ethics and professionalism. Okay, so that's why we still maintain this. Okay, because previously our MQA command is that you are saying that you are embedded teaching, but where is it? It looks like lost somewhere. Okay, so we have to be more structured. Okay, because at the end of the day, uh, professionalism training or nurturing professionalism comes not only in the course in the curriculum. It must be the whole lot. Uh, and the most important thing is experiential learning, learning from experience. And this has been uh, said by Prof Zabidi since he became the dean and a mantan dean. He keep on saying that we have to put on more experiential learning. Later you will learn, you will hear from medical educationists how we are trying to get more and more experiential learning for our students. Okay? Sorry, I have to take. Okay. So basically, this is the whole thing. But the main thing is that we want our graduate to graduate as safe doctors. But what is the definition of safe doctors that is inclusive of ethics, professionalism? So that's the whole idea. Okay? So that's why when we, in our exit professional exam, how are you going to put yourself as examiner is that, is he safe to become a houseman? That's all. Is he safe to become a houseman? To, to take the role of a houseman? That's all for our MD. Okay? So that's how we try to differentiate with postgraduate specialist MD program. Okay? This is only to be safe doctors because for them to learn the whole skill and everything, they still need to learn more. Uh, and my, my students always say that, Doctor, bila kita masuk house, semua macam tak belajar lima tahun. So then you rasa macam tak belajar, tapi you tahu how it is taking. But there's too many things more to say, to, to learn. And that cannot be in the five-year program. Okay? So this is an, our TASE Tuning as, an Academy as uh, Southeast Asia work that uh, I've been doing in, for the past two years, just closing last month in Bangkok, uh, where all the Southeast Asia University medical uh, degree program, deans and uh, deputy dean, comes together uh, under the European AIDS to look into the meta profile, what we expect, because now we are embarking outcome-based education. So when we have outcome-based education, we cannot design our curriculum, then we start to decide what is the outcome that we want. But it should come with what is the outcome that we want and then we design the curriculum. That should be the way. That is outcome-based education. So in OBE, we look into the meta profile and this is what most of the medical uh, uh, school in Southeast Asia think that our students must have the ethics and professionalism, communication, knowledge and skills, quality assurance, for them to do the patient care, okay? And if we uh, do mapping of our uh, curriculum program outcome, in OBE then you have to learn about what is program outcome, what is learning outcome, okay? So program outcome is that after five years, okay, what they will, uh, no, that one is learning outcome. Program outcome is after five years of graduation. So there's, there's P-O-L-O and so on, okay? But what we want for the graduates after they finish the five years program, okay? So P-L-O, okay? P-L-O, then we look into for each and every courses that we uh, offer, whether we can map the uh, meta profile for a graduate of medical degree program. So we are able to map it accordingly 
Okay. And in fact, um, during the uh, TASE um, program, um, we USM is the only university that actually have embarked on the credit system. And we actually have to guide the Cambodia, the Vietnam, the um, um, colleagues to help out. And in fact, uh, even the universities that have Malaysia students in Indonesia, they also have to learn this and we are helping them to, to create back the, the curriculum design to be, become OBE. In, in, and even UM who come in uh, together with us, because UM, they doesn't have the cost system, they doesn't have the credit system. So, and, uh, and their system is totally different than our system. It's not inter uh, uh, hybrid integrated. So, but we have managed to do this. Uh, and the thing is that when, when our student enroll in a medical degree program, the first thing that we realize is that we need to have to give them the adaptation skill. Okay? Then the professionalism course, the GMT 103. And here we should integrate. Okay, what do we mean by integrate? What's the difference between integrated system and traditional system? Uh, as Intan mentioned, traditional system, you have all out anatomy, all out physiology. But in integrated system, every system you discuss on anatomy. For example, in cardiovascular, then you are talking only anatomy of cardiovascular, physiology of cardiovascular. Then when you go to GIT, then the anatomy of GIT, together with the normal and the abnormal that can happen in that system. So that is integrated. So for PPIP, the same thing. We think that we cannot be only on the phase one. We really have to really go the whole lot with this as one of our MQA requirement to really get a course. But it goes along the way. Means that even though our official course for medical ethics and professionalism is at year one, third course, GMT 103, but actually the nurturing, the training of ethics and professionalism goes along up to year five. Okay? So that's why I tell my students, you have your group mentor, but you are my mentee from year one to year five. Okay? So I have the whole lot of mentees. Kami anak dah kami cucu dah. Okay? So that, sometimes, once in a while, somebody knock my office and then, Prof, this is my wife, this is my son. Okay, so dah ada cucu dah. Okay, okay. so what is adaptation skill? Um, we go for study skill. The problem of our student now is that the Malay local student, not the Malay, the Malaysian local student, they come from the academic environment of A syndrome. Uh, UPSR full A, PT3 semua A, SPM all A, A plus, A plus plus. Okay? So how to make them realize that the alphabet is not only A, but also A to Z. And it was lucky that we just take up to the LF only. <laughs> okay? Means that Ada yang stres sebab tak dapat A, dapat B. Bukan fail pun. Ha? Ha, sebab dia punya expectation daripada kecil dia di, di, di asuh dengan you have to get A. Kan? Score A, semua A, A. Ha? Suddenly, jadi dia punya elation mood bila dia masuk medical, orang kata you are the cream of the cream. Ha, segemuk benda kan? The best student of the best student and everything. So, dia punya mentality bila dia masuk medical, I can get A in medical. Okay? Dan dia rasa dia memang boleh buat. Ha? Tapi, in, the fact is that, bila saya buat a group discussion, tanya dia orang, macam mana you study untuk you nak dapat all A masa SPM? Nobody give a quick answer. They really have to think. And suddenly one of the boys kata, saya tak pernah plan pun untuk study. Sebab mak saya dah cari dah tuition mana saya nak pergi. Cikgu tuition saya dah cakap dah, okay, buat latihan ni, buat latihan ni, buat latihan ni. 
Buku mana nak baca, buku mana nak beli, mak saya dah belikan, cikgu tuition dah cakap dah, cikgu sekolah pun dah cakap dah. So, I never plan. So, bila dia datang USM, bila dia datang PPSP, dia macam layang-layang putus tali. Because kita bagi, ha, this is a timetable. Lepas tu, dah lah pula, lecturer ni, oh ada OT, I tak boleh masuk uh, lecture, kena tukar. So, dia kena manage time management, all sort of things. Berserabut So there are students Who dia rasa Dia akan senang Smooth sailing Dalam medical school Dengan cara dia yang begitu juga Sedangkan kita dah tak ada tuition Kita dah tak ada apa semua Tak ada siapa yang ke guide dia Macam mana nak buat kerja So we have to really twist them up again. Okay And the learning approach is different Previously they really rely on Cikgu sekolah Tuition Cikgu tuition. So now we we straight away expect them to become an adult learner. Itu satu lagi masalah. Adult learner means that dia kena cari sendiri. Inisiatif dia kena ada. Dia tak boleh nak tunggu orang bagi. Ha? Ha, kita punya terminologi dekat sana bukan spoon feeding dah. Senduk feeding. Ha? Student kita expect senduk feeding. Ha? Which kita tak boleh buat sebab kita bukannya ada undergraduate saja. Yeah? I think um, and the, the, the bigger portion of my time in teaching is actually my postgraduate, yeah? not the an undergraduate. So <coughs> macam mana kita nak semua dia adapt benda ni? Yeah? Dia orang memang dapat culture shock. Yeah? In fact, ada setengah student datang jumpa saya dengan siap cakap, at the end of the day, I tak ada mood nak belajar. Tak ada mood nak datang kelas. Sebab rasa datang kelas pun jadi tak tahu mana satu nak cobek. Ha, tak tahu nak cobek mana satu. Ha? Ha. Ha, jadi terbaik cakap kelater tak dah. Ha, okay. Bapak lagi kot. <laughs> okay. So this is actually we done with our medical educationist. Uh, and in fact and now we have 15 international student for year one. And we... There is another problem. Local student dengan cara mentaliti dia, international student, uh, Middle East punya mindset lagi different. So we are handling two different uh, group now. Okay, in fact for uh, for the uh, medical East uh, Middle East uh, student, we realize they still could not really adapt. So we will really have to do other things. Uh, so part of it is that uh, Dr. Fuad and Dr. Zahra, we are counseling counselor in medical education. We will handle on the what is the current uh, belief, expectation, then how to make them coping and so on. And that will take time. Okay. So this part of PPIP I usually give to Dr. Fuad and Dr. Zahra. Okay. So I just coordinate je, make sure ada berjalan. Yeah. Middle East, nak kata aspek spoon feeding pun tak juga. Tapi dia sebab Middle East ni pun dia ada daripada negara-negara lain dan lain negara lain dia punya level of maturity. Ada yang macam baru lepas SPM punya maturity. Jadi dia memang payah nak adapt. Dia duduk tunggu kita je Lepas tu bila dia Bila dia rasa kita tak uh, Tak pay attention kat dia Dia rasa terabai Dia lost Tapi ada juga yang mature uh, Yang memang boleh go on with our class So it's a different still And they have barrier language They are not good in English So what happened is that uh, and, uh, With the MOA With the Middle East government they pay USM for them to come one year earlier to USM Penang and to learn about English, take English courses and so on. Tapi, the thing is that, they're happy to Penang. Bila dia pergi Kelantan, why Kelantan is so much different than Penang? Satu lagi culture shock pula dah. So, ada yang kata, um, dia nak duduk Penang tak apa, tapi dia tak nak duduk Kelantan. So all those things eh? Our local student There are local student yang tak pernah sampai di Kelantan uh, 
dan dia memang bila sampai di Kelantan dia kata oh dia tak sangka ada KBMU ada AAON ada apa semua dia ingat ke I don't know lah level mana dia fikir kita tak tahu lah okay dan kalau Indian Indian student dia dia ingat ke tak ada Indian langsung di Kelantan okay so mungkin Bertam have a better place for them I don't know okay and the other thing is that exam skill okay exam skill because uh, as uh, we know we have all lots saya tak masuk SBA sini sebab ni yang slide, slide lama saya so bermacam-macam jenis we realize that masa minggu orientasi kita dah bagi briefing lepas minggu indas uh, uh, indaksi kita buat satu lagi induction week briefing lagi tapi dekat-dekat exam kena bagi briefing sekali lagi pula sebab masa tu dia orang bukannya nak fokus sangat dia orang duduk elated lagi dapat medik medik school dapat medik tu elated mood lagi okey ha, semua bagi dia senang jadi bila dia dah belajar belajar, belajar sikit dia dah rasa susah dia dah rasa pening dah semua semua baru dia nak dengar betul-betul pasal exam okey and then selepas exam first semester kena bagi briefing balik sekali sebab bila dia dah rasa balik ha, kita kena cakap balik kat dia So we always have feedback on exam every semester, okay? And uh, in fact, biasanya saya tanya student lepas dia semester exam saya tanya dia, is this what you expect to get? Dia kata masa dia masuk exam dia tengok soalan tu pun dia dah rasa this is not what they expect. Sebab dia expect dia masuk soalan dia boleh jawab macam dia boleh jawab soalan SPM bersenang. Tengok tengok jawab soalan kita entah apa benda lah lecture ni tanya, kan? Okay? Uh, and then lepas tu dapat result pula dia kata dia rasa dia boleh jawab tapi kenapa dia grade dia teruk uh, so so that is the thing that we always have to deal with okay and in my experience since 2008 Malay students selalu datang jumpa saya sebab fail ha uh, tension sebab fail chinese student datang jumpa saya bukan sebab fail kenapa kawan saya dapat A saya dapat B uh, okay in fact ada student yang fail professional exam, Chinese student datang jumpa saya, Prof, will this affect my chance to take my postgraduate later? Chinese student. Malay student, Prof, ada chance tak saya nak pass ni? Repeat exam ni? Oh, that's a different mentality. Sorry to say, but that is the reality that uh, so far in my experience. Okay, so the other thing is that With the current IT, cuba cuba fikir dalam satu hari berapa berapa jam yang you betul betul menulis handwriting sekarang. Do you prefer to do handwriting or do you prefer to type in your laptop now? Even even saya kalau mesyuarat pun saya terus type. Saya tak dulu saya belajar terengkai dulu memang suka buat terengkai lepas tu boleh type. Sekarang tak memang laptop kat saya saya terus type. Those, huh? So the same thing happens to our new generation, the millenniums. Okay, I always tell our student, don't save in your pen drive. You have to save in your brain. Huh? Sebab dia ada some false security. Lepas lecture ngajar, masuk pen drive, ambil powerpoint lecture. Tak rasa safe. Macam dulu kita. Lepas tu pinjam uh, apa transparency kan, lepas tu foto state pula kan, lepas tu tengok kalau kalau um, Prof Josh dulu tengok punya um, yang slide dia besar besar tulisan tulis balik kita tulis balik cantik balik kan, so now everything is IT, everything is digital, huh? and studies have shown that uh, less writing down what you understand. Affecting the ability for essay questions. Huh? It's getting more and more evidence now. Huh? Sebab tu lah kita setengah-setengah di Pak Mun memang kata, no, kes rai up tulis tangan. Okay, uh, memang kes rai up tulis tangan. Banyak benda semua so, tulis tangan. Assignment tulis tangan. Huh? Because there are things that they have to learn how to. Express their understanding in their brain into the writing wise, okay. And interestingly, last week I discussed with uh, Prof Mota 
uh, the ophthalmologist. Dia kata, I realise our postgraduate ophthalmology memang poor in SA. I kata, no worry lah Prof Muta, it is not only ophthalmology. It is everywhere, global problem. My, I have to teach my masters of public health and must doctorate in public health how to write an essay. And I have to make them write assignment, handwriting assignment. Because, and I don't give PowerPoint, my PowerPoint anymore. Because I want them to write whatever they understand from my lecture to the, their own words. So that is the problem on how are we going. This is our challenge, okay? Because, and not surprising, kalau you duduk kat lecture hall nanti, ha, macam kita seratus lebih kan lecture hall, da, ni kan? Ada ramai yang buka laptop. I remember few years back, saya pernah call budak tu. What actually you are use, uh, looking at? Oh, I'm taking the notes. Now, and as we go along, then I realise that makin ramai student yang ada iPad dan dia orang semua tu, 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 tu. every time dengan tu, 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 tu. okay. The same thing when you go to conferences or when you go to workshop. Uh, don't feel bad if your participants are actually using their smartphone or iPad. They may not be uh, answering WhatsApp or email. They are actually taking notes. Okay, so that's the generation now. Okay. So much so that I always that I and Fuad because I dengan Fuad yang paling senior, uh, Fuad Dr. Ab, uh, Tok Abah, saya Tok Ma. Okay? <laughs> okay? Because dia kata, bila kita nak buat PPIP activity ni, nak buat benda yang biar student rasa seronok nak join ni, memang kena kepala budak baru, budak generasi baru. Tak boleh dah kita orang ni nak fikir. Dah tak sampai time kita dah. Okay? Uh, but of course, in this thing, I still leave to Dr. Fuad to explain on this. In fact, for our year two, who's going to take Professional One exam soon in May, we already started on rebriefing them again on this. <laughs> okay? On the format of an exam question, and then we call up a department representative to look into what common mistakes students do in answering questions and so on. So, that is starting um, this week, actually. Okay? Okay. And you mentioned just now, um, dalam Dr. Intan punya briefing, you kata pasal uh, nurse give exposure and everything, kan? Masa dulu-dulu, Cik, macam dulu-dulu. Masa old system dulu, kita ada nursing block. Satu minggu nursing block. Ha, zaman saya, zaman bak dulu kita ada nursing block. Kita orang pergi hospital, ikut sister, ikut nurse, belajar buat bedding, semua yang nurse buat. Sekarang dah tak ada lah. Okay. Now in fact, we are looking into how to do IPE, Interprofessional Education. Okay. That is my next task with PDA. Okay, IPE. Macam mana kita nak buat our education system di mana pelajar akan dapat experience in learning sekali dengan nurse physiotherapist dietitian nutritionist and so on so that bila dia kerja nanti dia dah biasa dah dengan working as a team player so that is our next task okay and yang sekarang di baru di pingkat timbalan dekan berbincang dengan timbalan-timbalan dekan lain okay and but i've been embarking on ipe i think for the past 5 years Okay, baru baru nak nampak and uh, top admin nak tengok benda tu okay so and uh, but we have under PPIP is what we call the a day in doctor's life hospital attachment ini biasanya kita buat semasa GMT 103 tapi dia tidak duduk dalam BPK GMT 103 okay dia kena ada beza dia kalau dia masuk listed dalam BPK ha, dalam bahan penawaran khusus Bermakna kita kena ada structured assessment. Okay. Tapi kalau dia duduk under PPIP, dia tak ada summative. Dia tak melibatkan summative formative assessment. Okay. Tapi kita buat under hospital attachment, kita buat dalam waktu GMT 103. Okay. Our current curriculum review have decided 
to separate sebab sekarang ni new curriculum and uh, GMT 103 adalah first aid dan medical ethics a very weird marriage tapi kenapa kita combine first aid dengan medical ethics sebabnya first aid satu kredit medical ethics satu kredit satu kredit tak boleh USM BPK tak boleh kena dua kredit so kita combine yang ada paling sikit okey but last uh, after five years of going to uh, to this curriculum we realized that tak boleh memang tak boleh combine kena divorce okey sebab first aid sepatutnya dibuat di akhir fasa satu di mana student dah dah belajar pasal kardiovascular shock hematologi and, and hypovolemia dan sebagainya kan tapi ethics should come first because we want them to inculcate all ethical discussions in every block later in every course later so our curriculum review last month have decided to separate this so most likely hospital attachment will become part of GMT 103 okay so apa yang hospital attachment buat adalah kita akan uh, bagi satu PBL group student kita based on PBL group eh? jadi kalau sekarang kita ada 18 PBL group okay so setiap PBL group kita akan cari seorang clinical lecturer okay dan mana dia akan ikut semua aktiviti clinical lecturer tu ha, jadi anak ayam didik ikut je jadi katalah lecturer tu dia start morning round dia pukul tujuh setengah so dia memang kena jumpa dengan lecturer tu pukul tujuh pagi cita-cita sikit ikut orang ikut je observe only observe this is part of experiential learning so lepas tu katalah lepas work round lecturer tu pergi OT dia masuk OT ok so kita ajarlah sikit-sikit uh, dia punya precaution ke OT kalau lecturer tu pergi klinik dia pergi ke klinik dia tengok Huh? Kalau lecture tu mengajar So dia tunggu sekejap Dia boleh ikut Mengajar pun tak apa Ada teaching what Untuk postgrad Join in Ada general club Join in Supaya dia nampak This is the life Of a doctor Which is not just Seeing patient Duduk dekat klinik Dan tengok patient sahaja Ataupun duduk dekat ward sahaja Okay And So They follow the whole day And then they do reflection Okay Now semua special learning dia punya assessment atau adalah dalam bentuk reflection. So kalau you nak belajar special learning memang you kena belajar dengan medical education macam mana untuk buat reflection. Macam mana nak guide student untuk buat reflection. Okay. Uh, I still remember one student punya reflection is that this is my first time delaying my lunch for other people. Uh, mesti budak hostel lah ni. Okay. Sebab dia kata bila dia dia ingat ke dia dah boleh berhenti lunch break Tiba-tiba ada emergency, doktor tu kena pergi uh, visa special So dia pun kena ikut sekali lah huh? Tapi dia kata even though this is my first time delaying my lunch I didn't feel that I need my lunch Okay and then sebab masa mula-mula kita buat ni I still remember um, Dean at that time um, Prof. Aziz Baba Dia tanya Azwani Are you sure this hospital attachment will motivate student to continue medical medical study or you going to demotivate them? So so far our our evaluation so that at least they know I am on the right track. I'm taking the right career. Okay? And so so I share dengan um, you all the um, hospital attachment because saya dah publish ni eh? actually hospital attachment Uh, descriptive qualitative uh, evaluation of the reflection diary saya present di uh, Kumamoto last uh, the 15 ABC Kumamoto uh, Bioethics Conference dan publish dekat uh, uh, UNESCO and Bioethics uh, Publication Journal so and so this is what students do they do reflection uh, the doctor talk to the patient kindly the kid responded as they are talking with someone they know well So this, the reflection is that with this I understand that communication is very important. Okay. 
The doctor tells me that the patient comes from a poor family who could not afford to pay for taxi fee to come to hospital. I can feel his concern, care and sadness when he told me that. So we hope that slowly we are injecting small, small doses to nurture the compassionate there. So that's the whole idea. Okay. Community placement is also we done in year one. Actually, PPIP banyak fokus dekat phase one, year one, year two. Okay, sebab clinical year, dia orang dah berserabut dengan dia punya timetable. And community placement, tadi Dr. Intan kata, this is part of uh, university cost, this is not part of the university cost. This is under PPIP. University cost ada WUS untuk kesawanan, TITAS Tabadun Islam dan Antarabangsa, English cost, Bahasa Malaysia cost, dan hubungan etnik. Okay, so um, semua 18 credit unit total. Okay, yang student perlu ambil, mesti ambil dalam tempoh tahun 1 dan tahun 2. Okay, kenapa kita kata mesti ambil? Sebab bila dia masuk clinical year tahun 3, tahun 4, tahun 5, uh, memang full dah. Jadi kita memang nak dia ambil dan lulus. Dan English dia pula ada dia punya level. Kalau SPM dia grade berapa, dia mungkin kena ambil banyak level lagi. So dia mungkin ambil semester satu, dia kena ambil semester dua, kena ambil. Tapi kalau yang dapat good, that means dia kena ambil yang level English for medical students sahaja. Okay? So so dia dia pula ada semester satu, ada kos ni, semester dua ada kos ni, semester, so dia ada kos-kos lain-lain. So you will see in timetable, ada masanya English class. Kita tak boleh kacau lah. Sebab English class ni dia buat campur-campur dengan bukan buka budak medik saja dan dia handle by pusat bahasa. Okay. What we did in KLE is that uh, lecturer kita mula-mula pergi ngajar sana. Uh, tapi lepas tu Prof KJ yang ngajar. English pun I think the same. Uh, kita tengok macam mana because of course and everything. Tapi so maksudnya dia adalah daripada Indo. Syllabus Indo. Cikgu bahasa yang mengajar. Dan itu adalah wajib untuk graduation. Wajib ambil dan wajib lulus. Jadi kalau dia tak lulus lagi, dia kena ambil lagi. Kita ada student yang dah grad, exit exam, baru realise bahasa Malaysia tak lulus lagi. So dia tak boleh graduate. Dia tak boleh convo. So GOT kita kan tak cukup. Okay, so that's the, the, the challenge. <coughs> so community placement ni sama macam hospital attachment. Kita... Uh, letak anda PPIP Kita ada kita punya assessment Tapi dia bukanlah summative assessment Maksudnya dia bukanlah Memberi markah kepada Kredit sistem kredit, Pengiraan kredit okay. Boleh faham tak? Bila masa dia tak duduk dalam BPK Maksudnya tak ada summative assessment Untuk markah dikira sebab Dalam pengiraan kredit eh? <coughs> So Kalau jadi kita separate ethics yang ni pun akan masuk dalam medical ethics kemungkinan okay. so <coughs> sekarang ni apa kita buat semasa GMT 103 kita buat briefing kepada student untuk community placement dan kita uh, uh, jemput any lecturer sebagai supervisor so far Alhamdulillah supervisor memang uh, selalunya berlebihan ada setengah tu bila kita dah tutup pun tanya eh nak lagi tak supervisor sebab apa sebab community placement is something that doing in the community lecturer ramai yang terlibat dengan NGO NGO contohnya Prof Hans dengan Yoku uh, yang ophthalmology ada dengan dengan blind society uh, so ada dengan uh, apa an uh, uh, society macam an uh, down syndrome dan ada banyak jadi lecturer lecturer ni dia memang works with the NGO dan dia nak bawa medical student kita pergi. Okay. So um, so kita kita memang uh, matchkan okey satu group of student uh, sekarang ni sebab kita ada 18 because of uh, like 18 tapi setiap uh, group cuma ada 9 8 ataupun 9 orang student. Sebab kita kita punya MQA um, requirement group discussion 10 or less. Okay, not more than 10. Tidak tak effective group discussion. So sekarang ni PBL kita 8 atau 9 student. Jadi kalau nak buat community work, 8 ke 9 student, sikit sangat. 
Bukan apa, takut dia punya burden of work tu uh, banyak. Jadi kita combine dua group. Kita combine dua group, kita bagi pada seorang supervisor. Okay? Jadi supervisor tu ikut NGO supervisor tu lah. Ada juga supervisor yang jadi PIBG sekolah. So dia nak buat kat sekolah. Boleh juga. Uh, anything. Okay? So, um, so apa yang student tu akan buat, dia akan buat paperwork. Dia kena pergi jumpa dengan NGO tu, call ke, jumpa ke, discuss apa program yang dia boleh buat. So, they learn how to communicate with other people outside which represent the NGOs or the school. Hmm? The feedback from the student is that, hmm, saya dah biasa present seminar dan sebagainya. Tapi bila nak bercakap dengan cikgu sekolah, nak cakap dengan NGO, it's, it's a different communication skill. So, that's how they learn. Okay. And then they learn how to match uh, their activity with the target people. Okay? Sekarang ni tak guna perkataan target dah, guna perkataan intended. Uh, sebab sebab the terminology of target group ni dia kata, kalau orang kata, I target you, macam nak tembak you kan. Uh, so intended group. Uh, terminologi je bertukar, benda ni sama juga. Okay? So dia akan contohnya, Student dia buat dengan lecturer yang jadi PIBG sekolah agama dekat dekat Kelantan banyak sekolah agama kan. So biasalah dia orang mesti nampak okey kita nak buat sukan neka nak buat apa tapi dia kata eh tapi dekat situ kena kena separate lelaki tak boleh main dengan perempuan. So they that's how they learn that in certain community there are certain sensitivities. Okay? Uh, so so this is how uh, they will do paperwork and then dia akan present dia punya uh, suggestion of project. Okay, biasanya saya sekarang ni handle by Dr. Rashan. Saya ada committee member saya PPIP so ini um, untuk hospital attachment uh, our orthopedic surgeon yang akan mencari-cari lecturer yang terlibat untuk nak bawa student. Untuk community placement saya ada Dr. Rashan. Dr. Rashan is our doctorate public health uh, candidate tapi duduk di psychiatry department. So dia yang akan handle maksudnya dia akan matchkan student dengan lecturer Lepas tu bila student present Biasanya present dengan saya Dengan Raishan Because kita akan tengok dari sudut kesesuaian Dengan intended group Dan juga uh, Workload Kadang-kadang student ni dia, dia Semangat sangat Dia tak nampak benda tu dia nak buat tu Besar So kita kadang kita kena baiki juga And then We also want this creativity and innovation Okay dia mesti kita tak naklah dia buat benda yang selalu duk duk rewind orang sama. So we want to see the creativity and innovation of it. So we identify supervisor, they identify the NGO, plan the activities. Sekarang ni uh, untuk community placement memang kita peruntukkan 500 per group. Per group yang dah combine dua PBL. Okay, so biasanya Dr. Aisyah akan minta uh, duit pendahuluan daripada dekan masuk dalam akaun profession atau bagi pada student lepas tu kita kena kutip pula siap-siap student bagi pada bendahari nak kutip-kutip tu satu hal lepas tu kalau yang kena make sure lah cukup kalau lebih lebih duit kena bantah balik kalau tidak nanti doktor Aisyah lah kena potong gaji <laughs> okey so that's the uh, tapi uh, insyaallah student memang faham bab ni dia memang make sure and Pesit semua tu memang dia jaga. Okay, dia memang ada seorang yang in charge. Yeah? Plan for activity. Dia present tu. Hmm. So lepas tu biasanya projek presentation and reflection. Um, student zaman sekarang dia orang dah biasa buat video. I can see the changes uh, sekarang ni semua buat video. Dia buat video tentang dia punya aktiviti daripada plan sampai hari tu sampai aktiviti semua. Lepas tu dia cakap reflection. Okay. Ada seronok juga dengan reflection student ni. Our first international student from Iraq. Mustafa. Sekarang dia year four. Dia punya reflection of community place semua boleh tahu. So I said, Mustafa, so what did you learn from this community placement? Oh, Prof. This is the first time I learn how to open up a tin sardine. Itu Middle East student kita. 
And dia kata, what else you you learn? And then I learn the first time how to make sandwich. Tak apalah walaupun kita tak nampak benda tu professionalism related apa semua kan. Tapi ya, lepas dia kata, so why why do you think that this is important? Dia kata sebab dia nampak maksudnya untuk dia nak come to other people, what he is having so far in his life may not be what the life experience of other people. Dia kena understand more. So that is actually the reflection that I want. Ya tak apa lah mula-mula dia cakap buka dia sadi apa semua pun tak apa bagi chance dulu. Okay so that is Mustafa the first uh, international student. Masa tu dia dia only international student dalam group dia. Okay. And so so there's a lot more reflection and I presented also this one. And so and reflection student yang pergi down syndrome dia kata apa? dan dia nampak walaupun ada disability tapi orang still boleh enjoy life so every time i have a little bit down rasa tak boleh nak and tengok uh, tak boleh nak cope dengan kelas dan semua i remember back dia orang lagi teruk disability but they still can enjoy life so why me, why not me okay and uh, students yang pergi dekat old folks home dia kata dia orang masa tu baru belajar buat ambil BP dan sebagainya kan So pergi old folks home dia pun nak ambil BP apa semualah Tapi the old folks home nampak tak happy je Lepas tu dia kata we put aside all the BP set and everything And we start talking to the old people there And they really happy And we realise that the way we talk to them is We have to be a little bit slow in speed But high in volume Because they didn't really hear it And they are so happy for us to just listen to their old stories So that is the eye learning communication in J3 Okay, so that's how that is experiential learning yang kita nak. So kita buat awal daripada medical school life. Okay, so ada yang pergi rumah sakit kenangan di Pekala Cepah. Yoku dengan sindrom Down ni memang every year sebab uh, Prof Hans memang dia memang book selalu lah. Okay, rumah sakit na for uh, teenage pregnancy yang ni reflection daripada student adalah dia selama ni very judgmental. Ha, bila teenage pregnancy dia judgmental And then bila masuk lecture saya Kita kata professionalism is that You cannot be judgmental Jadi dia kata bila dia pergi tu dia tengok Sebenarnya budak-budak tu bukanlah budak jahat ha, Dan sebagainya So that's how they understand Judgmental, non-judgmental that we put in professionalism And HIV AIDS and Student kita selepas community placement Still going for the Um, rumah perlindungan uh, HIV AIDS Sebab kita pun Dr. Maheran Di HIPZ memang uh, strong uh, Woman untuk HIV punya Dan setiap kali dia buat HIV uh, Apa, campaign uh, World HIV campaign Semua tu, uh, dia akan minta Saya cari student untuk volunteer work Untuk HIV Dan memang biasanya Dia cakap nak 20 yang volunteer Kadang saya cakap, doktor dah cukup 20 Boleh lagi tak sambung anda eh, Join je Huh? Because they really, because for them going out from campus is a distress. Ah, uh, macam macam gua you do sana kan? Okay. And they also learn not just this. They also learn time because they have to learn to plan. Bila nak buat? Uh, bila nak buat? Biasanya dia akan buat ujung minggu lah. Uh, dia akan buat ujung minggu. Dan dia kena plan resource. Okay. Ada juga yang join uh, kalau Disember ni biasanya dia join yang uh, program katan, eh? circumcision. Uh, so kalau dia join dengan yang tu dia akan work with another NGO untuk yang nak buat kat sana. Hmm? Uh, it's very interesting juga dengan reflection dia pasal uh, katan, especially yang uh, the girls, Chinese girl punya SP, uh, reflection is totally different. Okay? Uh, dan uh, kebanyakan yang kita jumpa adalah dia kata dia duk fikir Malay Muslim tak boleh nak terima Especially Malay Muslim Kelantan Tapi bila dia pergi pada yang ni Dia kata okay actually there's no barrier of that ya, Sebab sekarang ni kan dengan racism and so on kan Jadi dia punya, dia jadi takut Jadi bila kita ajak dia keluar, work together Then dia realise oh that is not actually the truth ya, So that is what we we really want from them So this is You always can see the happy faces uh, when they do all these things. 
In fact, dia orang memang siap baju buat t-shirt untuk nak seragamkan dan sebagainya lah. Okay? Ha, kadang dia orang guna duit sendiri juga. So this is our assessment. Uh, I developed with uh, Dr. Fuad and Dr. Najib Makpa. And where we use a 360 degree program and assessment. Maksudnya, dia buat assessment dia sendiri. Peer group and group mate dia pun buat assessment untuk dia. Uh, dan supervisor pun akan buat assessment. So 360 degree. Maksudnya 360 degree ni, mana-mana orang yang boleh buat assessment akan buat assessment. Dan kita combine sekali. Okay? And we always realize, peer assessment memang memain peranan. Kalau budak tu memang yang tak tak buat kerja dalam teamwork, memang peer assessment. Dan kalau peer assessment dia rendah, memang kita akan panggil student tu. Sebab nanti dia dalam CFCS, dia akan jadi problem juga. So kita kena bagi tahu awal-awal. But nanti all the work later on is teamwork. Bila dia klinikal pun dia teamwork. So masa ni kita detect awal-awal kita panggil terus. Yeah, so memang kita panggil. Panggil tu biasanya saya main cakap-cakap je dulu. Maksudnya what do you think about the community placement? Do you think it's necessary? Do you think it's helpful for you? Lepas tu dia keluar lah cerita dia. Okay? In fact, um, saya pun ada seorang uh, tu uh, Chinese boy. Bila saya tanya dia, dia kata, do you know why I call you? Kata, I tahu dah, mesti pasal community placement. Okay, saya kata, so why do you think that I have to call you? Dia kata, no, masalahnya kenapa nak kena ada community placement ni? Saya nak jadi doktor, nak duduk, nak nak tengok patient. Bukannya nak pergi buat benda tu semua. And saya kata, okay, so what did you learn from that? Even though you did not involve much. So all this counselling skill apa semua ni, memang memang kena kena belajar lah, kena menuntut. Tapi saya ingat bila saya belajar pasal counselling skill ni, yang paling susah kita nak buat adalah listen, don't talk. Kita ni semangat nak nak nak, nak blabber, semangat nak blabber ke orang kan. Ha, tapi kita kena listen. Ha. So, so that is the thing that for me, tapi mungkin bila dah masuk lima siri ni dah makin pandai dah nak listen. Uh, tak banyak nagging dah okay okay And so so ini kita buat so kalau tengok dia punya domain kita dah telikan dengan domain soft skill dan yang MQA tengok soft skill so kita memang teli terus so, bila kita buat macam ni kalau MQA tanya when do you, where do you look into this dah ada okay so itu strategi kita supaya kita tak adalah buat buat banyak kerja Sekaligus. In fact, uh, since 2008, sebab bila saya dah buat kerja ni, saya cakap kepada Puan Zabidin. Tak ada masa nak buat benda lain. So, Puan Zabidin kata, you have to work smart, Azwani. Make out publication out of your admin work. So, so I have a few publication with medical education. So, so saya ni macam sebelah kaki dekat medical education. Sampai my department kata, come back to public health lah. <laughs> okay, but, but I'm doing that also. Okay. Uh, and for you to understand ethics, you really have to learn how you have you in your uh, daily practice, you are practicing ethical behavior. But for you to understand how to teach, you need a different story. Okay, so that's the whole thing. But everybody have uh, should be the what doing ethics teaching. Previous many years ago, ramai lah cerita saya. Why me? Why you ask me to teach ethics? So my answer is what? What do you think I will answer? So jawab senang je, why not you? If you think that you are not supposed to teach ethics, are you telling me that you are not ethical in your practice as a doctor? If you say you are ethical and professional, then you are the one who should teach ethics. Okay? So, so that's the whole idea. Okay, so this is publication. Uh, ni publication dekat our medical education journal. And uh, if you see that the first author is Dr. Azriani, because uh, at this time dia yang handle community placement. So saya akan encourage my PPIP member to write, and then I look back into that till out. Um, so Dr. Maludin. Sebab dulu Dr. Maludin yang yang start community placement ni, idea dia. Okay, masa ni dia ada lagi lah. 
Uh, tapi bila kita publish ni dia dah ada kat Cyberjaya. Okay, so lastly soft skill. Other soft skill. So other soft skill ni ramai orang tanya saya apa yang buat dalam PPIP ya? Kata depends pada kehendak dan keperluan semasa. So you have to be creative, you have to understand the need. Okay? So um, dulu kita ada buat big sip. Sekarang pun ada lagi. Big sip, big sibling. Maksudnya the senior with the junior, senior to junior. So dia punya motto dia, I give therefore I gain, I teach therefore I learn. Bila saya present this one in Rome, uh, they really love this motto. And so we have a lot of work Masa ni kita orang masih Najib masa tu macam medical student lagi Okay uh, So masa ni kita orang masih tak busy lagi So we and masa tu budget pun okay lagi Kita banyak boleh buat outdoor In fact kita orang buat pergi hiking dan sebagainya And tapi sekarang ni Very difficult to do outdoor But it takes money So kita orang kena lebih kreatif untuk buat sesuatu yang uh, less costly, okay? So ada banyak uh, kekangan, okay? Uh, but of course in all these activities kita akan bukan kita yang buat untuk student. Kita kata okay, kita nak buat katalah kita nak buat hiking, tapi student yang akan form dia punya komiti sendiri, dia yang akan discuss tapi kita guide. Sebab kita nak teamwork, nak buat leadership, eh? nak nak train on that. So kita bagi dia buat and then you will see that student punya sebab generasi lain kan dia punya idea tu berbeza. Yeah? So tapi kita guide lah. Okay? So so it goes all to the problem solving and so on. Okay? This is um, my project menggunakan uh, knowledge transfer program masa role pertama. Masa role pertama tiga orang daripada PPSP dapat Uh, uh, grant KTP Saya dapat untuk DTSP uh, uh, DPST And Our timbalan dekan now dapat untuk stroke uh, At home uh, And then Prof. Zahirudin pengurusi CFCS dapat untuk CFCS Apa kami buat adalah Kami guna duit grant tu Untuk nak membiayai program kita okay? Macam saya Saya buat uh, DPST di mana saya boleh bawa student pergi merata-rata di seluruh Kelantan sebab saya ada bajet. Ha? Sebab saya dapat RM80,000 ini untuk tiga tahun. So bolehlah buat projek sampai ke Kuala Kerai ke Jeli mana. Di mana uh, we have uh, all the module, kita ada publish module. Sorry, saya terlupa nak bawa module tu banyak lagi. Uh, maximizing your personality, which is actually knowing your personality. Uh, that means... Uh, satunya kena tahu personality kita Dan yang kedua adalah mengenali personality orang lain Supaya kita boleh communicate Using a different approach With a different personality uh, So kita ada game Upin Ipin kat sini uh, Leading to lead adalah leadership uh, Taming your enemy is time management Interfacing strategy is the communication skill And response to choice is the change is the problem solving uh, Saya present my star Uh, di room hari tu My start is uh, My self transformation and reflection Bermakna sebelum program Kita suruh dia buat my start uh, In terms of skill uh, Working in team uh, apa ni, Communication uh, Listen to other opinion Voice out my opinion and communication Dan lepas tu Dia buat selepas tu jadi kita tengok Sepatutnya dia berkembang dengan star I got this idea from one of the medical education conference Okay, and so this is published an article in the WMA Journal and, and basically kita buat sebab di Kelantan So kita buat dia pergi ke sekolah-sekolah And student akan arrange diri sekolah mana Dia akan arrange dengan dengan pihak sekolah Dia yang akan pergi tengok area sekolah Semua dia buat Kita tanya aja. kita just monitor And then lepas tu dia akan buat program-program tertentu untuk nak Uh, leadership of the student dan sebagainya Tapi di Kelantan kita kata Kita akan cuba buat dia Kalau sekolah yang bagus Bercakap sepenuhnya dalam bahasa Inggeris Kalau sekolah luar bandar Bercakap sepenuhnya dalam bahasa Mela bahasa Malaysia Bukan bahasa Kelantan 
because that is the main thing. So bila bila kita bawa student pergi sana, dia akan dengan sendirinya praktis bahasa Inggeris dia juga untuk student yang poor, untuk student yang good English dia akan membantu orang lain. Dan untuk student yang bukan Kelantan dia akan mix around dengan budak yang bercakap Kelantan. So supaya bila dia uh, later on dia masuk klinikal dia lebih uh, senang communicate. And, and uh, this program bila kita buat dia dia punya sebab saya train uh, medical student facilitator team uh, program ni biasanya di uh, di yang yang join the program daripada year 5 sampai year 1 bukan semestinya year 1 year 5 akan bantu so that is leadership year 5 akan bantu year yang junior untuk nak buat program okey yang junior belajar jadi team player okey dan uh, in fact uh, uh, yang last kali kita orang pergi tu sampai cikgu sekolah tu kata dia terkejut sebenarnya budak year 5 yang join tu dua minggu lagi nak professional exam tapi saya kata eh, betul ke nak join betul ke nak rasa tension dah tak nak fikir dah duduk kat hostel pun nampak orang nak study je semua saya nak keluar so dia keluar so that is distress okey so so and tapi sekarang ni saya Dr. Najib uh, geng saya lah Prof Azrian ni dah sibuk dengan third post Dr. Najib sibuk dengan e-learning dengan PBL Dr. Fung sibuk dengan assessment and uh, Dr. Ismail sibuk dengan elective so uh, sekarang ni kita uh, kalau student nak buat kita still bagi ataupun sekarang ni kita ada satu lagi program under KTP which is ATAP ATAP is adolescent to adolescent program yang kita look into smoking, safe sex dan sebagainya uh, Itu pun kita buat under KTP project So kita kita cuba dapatkan grant supaya kita boleh membiayai program student kita Sebab kalau nak semua guna operational budget memang tak ada duit So have to be creative So ATAP, uh, in fact ATAP saya bawa student last year ke Indonesia uh, Ke uh, University Sudirman uh, di Perwakato, Jogja untuk buat atap program saya bawa 10 orang student eh, menggunakan duit KTP separuh duit operational budget separuh duit student cari separuh sebab kita memang saja tak nak bagi suruh dia cari sebab dia kena plan jadi dia plan awal dia cari duit dia buat jualan dan sebagainya that is part of the time management resource management and then saya bagi duit an uh, KTP sikit saya bawa pergi to work itu dan uh, at the same time saya gain one MOA. So that's how you have to work smart. Kalau so, tidak memang tak larat lah. Okay. And so this is all the publication. Uh, we also do mentoring. Uh, this is uh, MSFT and Big Sip. Okay. So so this is and that means banyak kita buat publication juga. You can see the publication in the Medical Education Journal. And Last but not least is the student advisory system Yang ni memang saya handle sepenuhnya Jadi kalau kita semester start September uh, Julai tu saya dah start kerja Julai saya dah start kerja Okay because we know that our student still lagi macam mana pun uh, Masalah dengan student kita ada student kita yang memang sangat tight with their parent Maksud apa-apa mak uh, tapi ada juga student yang tak nak risaukan mak ayah. Dia ada dua jenis. Jadi ada ada problem semua pun dia tak nak cakap kat mak ayah dia. Sebab dia tak nak mak ayah dia risau. Dia tak ada duit nak makan, dia tak cakap kat mak ayah dia. Dia cuma cakap kat tok mak lah. Okay. So dia memang akan ada student yang jenis macam tu. Ada yang jenis yang dia akademik dia not good. Dia tak nak cakap kat mak ayah dia. Satu lagi dia kata kalau dia ada stress apa semua nak cakap kat mak ayah dia sebab mak ayah dia tak faham especially kalau mak ayah yang bukan doctors lah okay? so dia akan jumpa kita so we need this advisory so this advisory system bukanlah kata kita memang nak jaga student tu uh, macam kita jaga anak kita tapi is basically saya selalu cakap pada mentor kita adalah supaya bila dia ada problem dia tahu dia ada tempat untuk dia nak mengadu tu je okay? dia ada tempat untuk mengadu ok So, so we cover academic, personal, kadang-kadang jadi doktor cinta pun ada saya ha? uh, 
Kadang-kadang yang dah kahwin kita pula jadi jadi uh, kaunselor perkahwinan sosial ada juga yang ada masalah dengan domestik dengan rumit ada juga uh, financial yang ini ni biasa financial ni student yang ada yang tak ada duit sebab dia miskin dia biasanya takkan come forward dia ada dia punya dignity So nak handle dia lagi tricky Sebab dia orang tak nak dilihat sebagai orang yang miskin Yang tak ada problem so, kan? Tapi dia tension Dan kadang-kadang affect dia punya akademik So yang ni lagi tricky Biasanya kawan-kawan yang akan bagi tahu Kawan-kawan yang bagi tahu Saya pernah ada student datang jumpa saya Prof Please help my friend Dia makan nasi sekali sehari je Nasi dia ambil banyak Dia campur bubuh ikan goreng je Tu je dia makan sehari ha. Sebab apa? Sebab dia pernah uh, Kena repeat ya Tak disambung dia sesuai Dan baru duduk raya Kata, Kenapa dia tak datang jumpa saya? Dia malu ke? Dan dia tak cakap pada mak bapak dia Sebab mak bapak dia bukanlah orang kaya dia tahu kalau dia cakap pada mak bapak dia, mak ayah dia mesti cuba cari duit Untuk nak bagi kat dia ha, So macam tu So kalau nak panggil dia tu satu skill yang berbeza Dan biasanya saya kalau saya dah ada appointment dengan student Kalau TDA panggil meeting pun saya cakap minta maaf saya ada counseling student ha, TDA memang tak ganggu saya lah ha, Habis-habis dia mesej, dah habis ke tisu satu kotak kat mana ni <laughs> okay? ha, Ayahnya sebab kalau yang datang menangis lah Especially kalau lelaki menangis ke perempuan menangis tak apa lagi I can hug them yeah, Kalau perempuan menangis ni payah sikit okay? uh, So so that's the thing okay, This is our new medical edit uh, Bukan new pun tak adalah Dah nak pergi PhD dah Kata Anissa I think some of you kenal So the challenge is that You are dealing with people With different age Different mindset Different belief Ni Tanzi tak pernah Berinteraksi dengan Melayu Sebab dulu dia, kerja, dia belajar kat sekolah Cina huh? This is a student leader So this is actually um, Saya cakap kat um, My friends yang sekarang ni jadi uh, Antar anak kat USM kan Kata how's my son or how's my daughter Dia kata kalau nama anak-anak you tak, Saya tak ingat That means dia tak ada problem Sebab dalam file saya Dia dah student yang ada problem Ataupun All the students leaders Okay Okay And also You have to learn personality My 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 other work in medical education is on personality Okay And So And I tell you If you really understand personality You can work with any people You can work with any people Because How to handle different people is different strategy Okay Okay So previously we have personal mentor Kalau macam bak dulu pun kita ada personal mentor That means bila masuk je Academy office akan letak seorang lecturer Dengan seorang Mungkin Dr. Mim pun sama dulu kan So maksudnya just mind matching lah Kadang-kadang mismatch kan okay? I remember my my mentor uh, previous person, PA ya eh? PA personal mentor My PA dulu Orthopedic surgeon daripada India So saya ni yang baru masuk medical school uh, Yang English belum lagi pandai nak cakap Pergi nak jumpa dia, nak pergi hospital tu dah tak reti dah satu kan? Lepas tu tak faham kenapa dia tak boleh Sebab dia ada work around, dia ada OT dia ada semua, Kita tak faham Lepas tu pergi jumpa dia, English dia Entah apa-apa benda dia cakap saya tak faham kan? Uh, so there's a lot of mismatch So Prof Zabidi Of course um, Working with uh, XMRSM Uh, if uh, if those with you with SMSM kita ada um, family room home room kan home room jadi kami uh, testing okay untuk buat group mentor tapi volunteer masa mula-mula nak buat profesi sebab apa kata are you sure Azwani that our lecturer want to volunteer tapi so far saya memang tak ada problem in fact saya Selalu kena minta maaf dah penuh Sampai macam tu We put you on the next list Okay 
Sebab lecturer kita sebenarnya memang nak mengajar. I always tell my, the mentor, at least you duduk dengan budak-budak ni rasa muda sikit. Huh? Ha. Especially orang yang age, my age lah. So appointed by dean, kenapa kita buat appointed by dean supaya dia boleh masuk SMS? Kita kena fikir juga. Administratively, kita kena fikir juga yang orang boleh nak masuk dalam SMS dia. Kalau appointed by saya, tak laku. So kita cakap dengan dia kan, appointed by dean. Appointed satu lecturer, dulu 10 hingga 12, sekarang dah 98. 98 per student. Dan kita guna konsep phase one student, year one, year two. Jadi satu mentor tu pegang dia untuk dua tahun. Okay. Jadi untuk clinical year, dia pegang daripada tahun tiga sampai tahun lima, sampai dia graduate. So macam baru ni, apa ni, yang yang duk pegang tahun tiga bagi nama untuk new tahun tiga. So dia kata, apa tu Prof Jeffrey. Prof Jeffrey, Prof Jeff tak boleh, Prof Jeff dah ada group yang akan masuk tahun empat sekarang ni. Saya kata, oh saya tengah kontrasaktif punya period. Tak boleh ambil. Sehingga student dia tu graduate tahun lima. Okay. So kita akan buat gitu supaya dia selesa dan dia kenal each other. Okay. So dan lecturer pun seboleh-bolehnya phase one saya akan ambil daripada lecturer-lecturer basic sciences. Tapi ada juga clinical lecturer yang memang specifically call me. Saya nak ambil news yang phase one. Dia semangat nak suruh budak ni bila masuk klinikal tak ada problem. Ha, okay. So kita bagi juga. Yeah. Tapi basic sciences lecturer biasanya tak nak uh, ambil daripada uh, ambil yang klinikal year student. Sebab biasanya problem dia related dengan klinikal studies. Kita ikut PBL. Year one kita ikut PBL. Uh, ikut PBL group. Jadi dia PBL pun dia nampak muka tu. Dia pergi jumpa mentor pun jumpa muka tu juga. Selama dua tahun. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, Ramai juga yang tanya saya Kalau dia bukan MD background MD MBBS So untuk phase 1 tak apa Dia PhD, MSc pun boleh uh, Sebab kita cuma nak nak uh, Offer services uh, Offer something je kan uh, Offer untuk dia nak boleh bercakap dengan orang je And then dia memang mengajar student tu Okay And so kadang-kadang satu mentor ni kadang-kadang tak ada kerja pun dia sepanjang masa. Ada juga. sebabnya dia bila student ada problem dia ada datang. Jadi bukannya kata busy sangat jadi mentor. Kadang-kadang sampai mentor pula call saya. Eh kau ni betul ke ni tak ada student panggil saya pun semua ni tak apa. That means your student dah okay. Sebab kalau saya detect student problem, saya akan bagi tahu mentor. Jadi kalau quiet means that your group members are good. The mentee are good. Okay, so that's the thing. Group. Dalam group. Tapi tapi maksudnya kita ada family meet. Kalau year one kita ada family meet. Biasanya family meet kita akan arrange sebelum exam dan selepas result keluar. Untuk untuk supervisor tanya khabar lah. Okay. Uh, tapi uh, sekiranya perlu, mentor boleh arrange personal uh, discussion. Sebab kadang-kadang ada juga benda serius yang mentor kena arrange. Okay? Uh, and so far mentor are really, really dedicated. In fact, saya biasanya kena counselling mentor. Nak exam pun mentor macam mak bapak juga. Mentor pula yang suspend. Eh, Kak Wani, mentor saya, mentor saya okey tak exam baru ni? Oski ada tak yang panik ke semua-semua? Sama macam tu. Okay. And then kadang-kadang mentor pun dia suspend juga. Bila student message kat dia kata problem apa semua. Jadi dia pun tak tahu nak buat apa. Uh, biasa juga dapat. Uh, saya pun dah dapat call. Saya duduk uh, meeting uh, outstation. Mentor call saya. Kak Ali nak macam mana ni? Student saya kata dia rasa macam nak commit suicide. Oh tu dia. Saya pun kena keluar dari meeting. Counsel the mentor first. Okay. Before she can counsel the uh, mentee. Okay. So as I say, you are just offering listening, your ears, you are helping hand, you offer time ini yang biasanya penting. Tapi offer time pun tak sangat sebenarnya. Sekarang ni dengan WhatsApp and everything, you want buat WhatsApp group, WhatsApp ni. Hmm? And uh, but they are also doing recognition. Okay, macam contohnya kita sekarang setiap course kita ada kahut. So lepas tu kita akan buat kahutas of the month. Kahutas kita buat kahutas apa? Kahutas of the course. Dia macam kalau 
kalau kan kalau shopping complex kan dia ada apa um, staff of the month kan jadi kita buat kahutus of the cost yang dapat tertinggi kahutus kita akan letak gold silver bronze dengan gambar dia orang kita akan tampal depan BK Okay, that's part of motivation Tapi kita bagi tahu mentor Mentor pun akan appreciate pula dia orang Because Millionaire, student and Generasi sekarang Dia nak cepat Feedback Dia nak cepat feedback dan dia expect kita appreciate Itu generasi sekarang Okay, so kita buat macam tu uh, Of course um, Kalau saya dapat Dulu-dulu uh, saya dapat juga komplain daripada student Lecturer, mentor dia tak nak bagi pun nombor dia Memang lepas tu black, blacklist lah Lecturer tu jadi <laughs> saya punya mentor Okay, sebab you need to have all these things Okay uh, Saya selalu cakap kat student uh, You can uh, WhatsApp Or Facebook Messenger to me anytime But you have to know that by 10.30 I off dah my internet sebab I nak tidur dah Okay, tapi sebab student kadang-kadang dia Dia tak tengok jam pukul berapa Dia main whatsapp dengan kita Dia pukul 12, pukul 1 pagi tu macam pukul 9 malam dia lagi So yang tu kita kena selalu remind dia lah Okay Tapi janganlah sampai Dia anggap kita tukar Sebab kita pernah dapat satu case student um, uh, Apa Bukan commit suicide, apa dia panggil kalau yang uh, attempted suicide Sebab apa? Dia stress, mentor dia masa tu duduk attachment di overseas Dia tak ada siapa nak cakap Dia telan panel dia 20 biji okay. So, I kena cakap dengan mentor dia Please put some boundary, jangan sampai dia dependent on you Jangan sampai you tak ada, dia tak tahu, dia uh, lost Sebab nanti bila dia graduate, dia houseman, they have to be resilient. Ha, kadang ada mentor yang baik sangat. Oh, tu masalah juga tu. Okay? Ha, ada mentor yang stress sebab dia nak provide solutions. We are not providing solutions. We are just guiding them. Ini you kena belajar dengan Dr. Zahrawi lah. Kena panggil Dr. Zahrawi buat counseling uh, uh, workshop. Okay? Don't expect immediate drastic change. Don't expect similar change between similar. Macam kita dengan anak-anak kita lah. Macam saya ada enam orang anak, enam orang lain, enam perangai. Kan? Enam cara kan. So, sama lah juga dengan student. Okay. Never break the trust. This is very important. I have one case. Uh, student tu uh, depressed. Uh, masa tu sudah kat lunch dah. Dia datang jumpa saya ketuk pintu. Saya tengok muka dia pun dah tahu dah dia mesti sampai wrong. Lepas tu memang bagi dia makan, cakap and everything semua So bila masuk jawatan kuasa curriculum saya kena bagi tahu lah student mana yang under saya yeah? So one of the lecturer yang dalam curriculum committee tu Baik dengan student ni So um, jumpa tengah jalan dia just tanya je how are you now Student ni dia terus call saya Prof you, you cerita saya punya masalah kepada orang lain ke? Dia say how how dia nak jaga confidentiality dia tu dia tak nak orang tahu dia stress so it's very important saya terpaksa tulis uh, bagi tahu pada semua jawatan kuasa curriculum apa sem, apa yang saya cerita pasal student sebab kita kena dis, disclose lah student ni ya berapa masalah apa dan sebagainya tapi bila you jumpa student tu personally sebaik mana you dengan student tu never ever say anything that shows that you know ya please Saya memang kena cakap sebab saya kata kalau you tak betul, you tak buat macam ni, dia dah tak trust saya Dia stress pula sekali lagi, entah apa pun dia buat So that's very important Hari tu sebab dia, dia pediatric posting tingkat 6 Dia rasa dia macam dia nak terjun daripada tingkat 6, dia datang cari saya Okay So so just imagine kalau misalnya dia stress lagi dan dia dah tak trust saya So my my department member pun dia tahu dah kalau dia nampak student yang muka pelik-pelik pergi kat bilik saya Dia orang tak call dah saya, dia tak ganggu saya dah Dia tahu uh, and, and then saya pun selalu saya ke whatsapp kat my husband I'm having student problem because Saya balik nanti saya dah exhausted Mental mental exhaustion Saya cakap dekat psychiatrist sebab itulah saya tak boleh jadi psychiatrist huh? Letih Okay 
So, but sometimes you have to break the trust. Okay, you have to refer to psychology, psychiatrist or anything. Tapi macam mana saya teach our mentor is that kalau you nak kalau student pergi jumpa mentor, mentor nak cakap kat saya, mentor kena cakap pada student. Is it okay for you that I will tell your case to Prof Azwani as PPIP chairperson for further action? Kalau dia kata jangan tak, tapi so far memang student kata okey. Ya. Yeah? dan saya pun bukan panggil dia, saya takkan panggil dia. Bila you panggil dia dah jadi hmm, kan terkejut kan. Ha. Saya tak panggil dia tapi saya akan work saya akan bagi arahan pada mentor. saya tak akan panggil student tu. Jadi nak nak tanya nak dig up everything mentor dan counselor or psychologist but not me. Sebab saya dia orang nampak sebagai admin. Okey? so saya akan buat macam tu. Okey. Sikit lagi, smart student medical academic response team. Ah ni akronim ni Najib Makpa yang buat. Okey. Uh, Bermaksud kita support medical and academic. Ada student yang ada masalah medical sahaja. Uh, undiagnosed on, on macam-macam diseases lah. Uh, okay. And, at, at, even undiagnosed PTB pun ada. Uh, kita handle. Ada yang academic sahaja problem. Ada yang medical problem affecting academic. Ada yang personal problem affecting academic. Macam macam ni. So, tapi so this is operational definition. Lepas MQA, lepas kita buat benda ni, semua MQA panel daripada universiti tu lepas tu email kat saya minta SOP smart. Okay. Sebab kita buat benda ni supaya dalam, kalau kita tengok MQA, document 4 memang ada student advisory system. So kita nak document dan kita do something. Yeah? So this is the whole thing. Okay. So apa yang kita buat adalah Kadang-kadang problem identification daripada lecturer, ada lecturer yang cakap yang call saya uh, kata saya nampak student ni selalu tak datang kelas ataupun nampak datang kelas tapi nampak macam serabut je. Ada macam tu. So ada juga yang daripada student, daripada mentor ataupun daripada posting coordinator, especially clinical posting. Okey. So dia akan bagi tahu saya, biasanya akan bagi tahu saya. Saya akan bagi tahu TDA. Okey. So TDA kalau saya call memang dia mesti jawab. Ya. Yeah. Masalahnya biasanya berlaku yang besar-besar TDA dan dia kan tak ada tak ada kat kampus. Dia pandai cari masa. Okey. So response team so saya akan tengok case by case. Ada case yang saya cuma perlu guide mentor untuk tolong student. Tak masuk dalam file kita. Tak masuk dalam smart. Okey. Tapi ada student yang perlu pergi pada kaunselor. Biasanya saya tak masuk smart juga. Yang masuk smart ni yang yang uh, lebih teruk sikit. Maksudnya perlukan apa ni uh, uh, psychiatrist, perlu uh, physician tertentu, perlu yang banyak lagi, yang banyak benda yang kita kena ni yang sampai kita kena buat meeting. Uh, so saya dengan TDA akan panggil meeting orang tertentu. Okey. Dan kita akan masuk smart. Pun masuk smart maksudnya kita akan ada case ID smart ya. Yeah? Dan case dia akan masuk dalam file dia. Supaya katalah dia tiba-tiba kata nak penangguhan pengajian, kita boleh sokong sebab kita ada recommendation. Lain-lain okay. yang yang tak masuk smart tapi mentor report kat saya, saya suruh dia email cerita. Email kat saya, saya akan save tapi saya tak akan masuk smart sebab kita sebolehnya tak nak banyak sangat dalam file student. Okay. So this is our form. So kita ada refer code, kita ada name of the student, year of the student, reason of referral. Okay, so kita ada case in charge person. Case in charge person ni adalah lecturer yang identify ataupun mentor yang identify siapa dia. Kan? Okay, so kalau refer for psychiatrist or for psychologist, kita kadang-kadang psychiatrist tu dia nak tanya lebih lanjut dulu sebelum dia jumpa student. Okay, so kita akan uh, buat yang ni. So kita akan hantar yang ni untuk ni. So salinan satu salinan akan simpan dalam folder patient. Student, sorry. Dalam uh, student uh, uh, file student. Dan ada satu lagi uh, bawah dia tu adalah feedback daripada physician yang kita hantar. Okay. Sebab semua ni confidential. 
Jadi kalau masuk majlis pun Kalau perlu masuk majlis Kita akan identify only with refer code Yang ni SOP kita kita dah Kita dah check dengan um, Apa kita punya lawyer In terms of privacy, confidentiality dan sebagainya Okay Okay So Biasanya yang banyak handle adalah saya dan PDA Okay, AR of course memain peranan uh, Clinical psychologist Tengok pada keperluan case by case lah Okay um, So at the end of the day, we are the role model Yeah, that's the whole idea, we are the role model Sebab student memang observe you Okay, student memang observe Okay um, I quote Prof. Zabidi mention A teacher teach students according to curriculum But an educator or the murabi Touch their students' heart and understand their effort and struggle As they go along the curriculum Means that Are you a lecturer who give lecture Or you are an educator who educate We should change from being a lecturer to become an educator Okay Okay, so that's my first part Any question dulu? Masih tukang ni ke? Dr. Um, Dr. Azwani is um, kata boleh buka boleh boleh tanya soalan juga kalau ada sesiapa nak tanya soalan. Hello. Ha, terima kasih Dr. Prof Azwani. Uh, saya nak tanya soalan kalau pasal yang student uh, full paying yang sekarang dekat PPSP what is the kind of spectrum you have a problem untuk PPIP? Uh, you mean the the Potential problem? Middle East, kan? Middle East problem, yeah. right? Ah, uh -huh. and masa Mustafa and tak banyak problem sebab Mustafa is a, a mature student. And cuma dia and dia language barrier, dia tak faham society. So I tag dia dengan uh, one of the lecturer yang berbalik daripada Ireland. So okay, dia yeah, okay, fine Sekarang ni masalahnya Dia um, Sepatutnya kita kadang-kadang visa pun masalah lagi Walaupun kita dah berapa, tiga batch, empat batch lah Visa lambat, so dia dapat dia Jadi dia first week of class tu dia duduk sibuk dengan visa, duduk sibuk dengan macam-macam lagi Jadi dia tak concentrate dalam kelas Dan kadang-kadang briefing pun dia tak pergi And we also have problem macam uh, problem baru ni uh, I don't know uh, that one is a uh, top admin punya decision and everything uh, RME dia, medical check up dia kalau buat dekat hospital USM Mahal teruk-teruk punya Dan kan dia medical student kita So kena buat dekat KBMC So masa kelas dia kena pergi KBMC So itu mula-mula problem Jadi masa briefing dia banyak tak ada So sekarang ni problem dia bila di PBL kita buat uh, last batch dia minta kita dia nak satu PBL group. So saya tak agree tapi at the end PDA bagi juga buat. So lepas one year kita kata tak boleh. Dia kena mix around. So sekarang ni PBL kita buat uh, dua orang. Kita dia ada kawan lah. mula-mula uh, kita buat seorang satu satu group tapi dia kata kita buat beda, satu group tu dia ada kawan seorang lagi. Okay And so dalam PBL The problem is that Student kita pun kan Biasalah macam kita bagi talk kan Mesti cakap rojak je kan okay? Jadi uh, student kita pun rasa Uncomfortable Sebab nak kena English semua So I have to tell the local student This is the time for you to practice your English Because later on when you go to clinical years You pun kena present banyak in English dan sebagainya dan dia orang pun kadang-kadang ada yang English pun barrier juga. Uh, tapi bila kita couple dua ni much better because kalau dia tak faham dia dia pun mulalah cakap Arab dengan seorang lagi. Uh, and so at least ada gang lah kita kata. 
and so they are still uh, uh, trying to really look into this. Lepas tu ada juga setengah-setengah ni yang memang anak yang orang yang terlebih kaya. Bukan anak orang kaya, anak terlebih kaya. Kan? Bila anak terlebih kaya ni, dia rasa macam I pay full pay to you. You have to serve for me. That mentality ada. Jadi kadang-kadang bila kita kata ni, why should I go? Why uh, you didn't give it to me? Dia nak kita yang letak on the silver plate for them. Uh, so for for us to really make them realize this, nampak student center tu uh, challenging. It's very challenging. So and uh, actually apa yang kami akan buat untuk batch kali ni? Um, nanti Dr. Dr. Puat dan Dr. Zarawi akan handle Kita akan kumpulkan semua 15 orang international student ni Dengan Dr. Zarawi sebab Dr. Zarawi is a counselor Kena bagi kerja kat dia lah sebab saya memang tak kerti juga So dia akan try to dig up what is their problem in adaptation and how we should help them So we hope that uh, and then Dr. Puat akan handle the local student sebab lo, Dia macam ni local student punya mental mindset Budak ni tak nak mix dengan dia orang. Dia orang punya mindset, dia orang ni tak welcome by the local people. Okay, so kita kena buat uh, matching lah. So Dr. Buat akan handle local, uh, Dr. Zarawi akan handle international. So hopefully with that discussion later, we can uh, get to how the best to help them. So far yang sebelum ni kita buat, memang kami buat Panggil dia, discuss dengan dia So yang best sebelum ni dah, dah getting better So yang ni yang terbaru ni memang um, Ada a few yang okay uh, Tapi masih ada yang uh, Masih lagi duduk dengan geng dia je dan sebagainya uh, Sebab bila kita buat PBL group dia saja Dia tak faham dia duduk cakap dengan sama tak faham dia okay? uh, Actually last batch yang sekarang ni sepatutnya tahun 2 And Berapa orang? Uh, quite a number of them CGPA dia less than two CGPA less than two That means teruk lah uh, kalau, kalau kita guna uh, Standard uh, induk Dia dah P2, probation two Probation two ni Kalau dia fail sekali lagi untuk dapat dua uh, uh, GPA Dia akan P3 fail and out Tanpa dia fail professional exam so kami panggil dia Memang letih lah jadi TDA <laughs> Panggil dia uh, I dengan TDA panggil student tanya, Bagi tahu dia biar dia faham Dia punya status macam mana So what they want to do and so on So case by case Memang penat sikit lah dengan international student Lepas tu saya kata kalau you nak ambil 20 student You ambil semua Middle East pun tak apa Mungkin bila dia duduk dekat bertam dengan geng dia saja dengan tak ada yang ni Dia punya adaptation lain, I don't know, that is hypothesis also uh, uh, Tapi apa saya akan kena jumpa kaunselor aku, tak tahulah Okay Any more question or we go for break? Okay, cuma dah hypoglycemia Okay Okay, we're gonna go for a break until 2 p.m. Um, Prepacked food is um, can can be obtained from uh, cafeteria science uh, cafeteria science at Bertram, and we're gonna uh, start uh, at 2:30. Counter Counter pendaftaran akan dibuka pada pukul 2. CJ boleh di, uh, diambil pada pukul 2. Terima kasih.